Hello everyone and welcome to the Arzenith Ossuary, and as you can probably tell by the title, we are about to unlock Thaumaturge with our, our good friend Grantamolus Dindergrabble, uh, given that I had totally forgotten that secondary classes was a thing and that I needed to, to get this bad boy to level 15 before I could unlock Summoner, but uh, here we are. We're going to speak to the guild receptionist here, Yayake. So you want to be a Thaumaturge. Welcome to the Thaumaturge's Guild. It is fate that has guided your steps here, friend. Within these hallowed halls, the arts of devastation are taught. Primeval magics from which to bring about an enemy's ruin. If you would join our ranks and wield the power of Thaumaturgy, I urge you to seize this moment and confide in me your arcane ambitions. Uh, sure, if you just stop talking, please. Yes, there truly was no other answer, was there? Lean closer now, and I shall whisper you to you of the Thaumaturgy's beginnings. The nation of Uldar inherited its traditions from ancient Belladiah, a city founded on the descendants of the first mages. The secrets of these illustrious sorcerers were ultimately entrusted to the priests of the Order of Nalthar, who have passed them down from generation to generation ever since. Focused and refined over the centuries of use in Order's funerary rites, the arcane magics of our ancestors eventually emerged as the art we now know as Thaumaturgy. A freezing blizzard to halt corruption, a raging fire to cleanse the corpse, a bolt of lightning to expel the sins of mortal life. The duomas employed in the preparation of the dead are equally efficacious when applied to the living. Thus does our guilt thrive in the depths of the Arzaneth Ossuary, a sanctuary devoted to Fowl, the divine arbiter of the afterlife. What say you then, adventurer? Would you plumb the abyssal depths of Thaumatoji? Let our learned sages guide your descent. Ah, but before you leap into the darkness, you must prove to our guildmasters that you are possessed of the spiritual fortitude necessary to look upon that which waits therein. When you're ready to submit to the judgment of our most eminent mages, say the word. Now that was actually a pretty good summary. Sorry for the Lullafell voice, by the way, but that's, you know, Lullafell's a... I mean, I can't give a potato a, a nice, pleasing voice, can I? That would be against everything I stand for. So, we've got, of the twelve, we've got Nald Thol, which are the, the, the sort of dualistic twins in one being. And the Arzenith Ossuary, where we are here, it's the Temple and Sanctuary of Thal, who, as we just learned, is the, the sort of arbiter for the, for the dead and deceased. And interestingly, uh, is responsible for the riches which we can take into the afterlife. So you would pray to Nald for uh, wealth in your lifetime and you would pray to Thal for the ability to take that wealth with you into the afterlife and of course a donation to the ossuary does uh, nothing to, to damage your uh, your standing with Thal. They remind me a lot, and I've mentioned this in other places, they remind me a lot of the uh, of the Ferengi from Star Trek. So I think of the, the Lalafell afterlife as um what's the Ferengi afterlife? It's like the grand um the grand treasury or the divine treasury or something like that. It's a it's a pretty similar principle. Um so that's what's going on. They're dodgy, dodgy little potatoes, aren't they? Jesus. Alright, yeah, yeah, okay. Well adventurer, will you join our guild or do you presume to ignore the urges of impatient destiny? Alright, square maple shield, weathered scepter. Jeez, it's easy to forget, isn't it, that so much of the early Thaumaturge weapons are one-handed and come with a shield. Alright. Oh god, there's going to be so many potatoes to deal with here. A wise decision indeed. To prepare for your initiation, I would have you study the volumes of fundamental thaumaturgical principles. All 108 of them. Or at least I would if such requirements had not been abolished. Too great a deterrent to fresh novices, they said. I suppose you should just have to settle for calling upon the collective wisdom of our guildmasters. We have five, you see, all brothers of the same house. Though they all wield supreme authority, it is the elders who provide a singular voice for the guild when one is required. Master could be Kokobaigo, I believe. Oh dear. Now, am I going to do five different Lalafell voices? <laughs> My, no, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. Um, anyway, what else? What else is there to say about this place? I don't know. Again, the they've inherited uh, the sort of black magic of uh, of the Miachi 
And as the Belladines have inherited it, it's become more like uh, how Thaumaturgy is today. Uh, given that a lot of those ancient black magics were very, very, very dangerous and have been outlawed at various times for various reasons. Uh, but it is interesting that what she just confirmed there is that at least the Uldans believe that the Belladines are the descendants of the Miachi. Uh, which is something that I've suspected, and uh, a question that, that sort of raised a lot, given that the uh, the Miyachi... I mean, I suspect that they were Lalafels, but all their statues, and all the Belladine statues as well, for that matter, don't really seem to resemble Lalafels. So I guess they're they're a bit insecure about their stature. Anyway, uh, Kokobai... What, what is this fucking guy doing? Hang on. Hang, hang on a minute. Let me see your face. Let me get a look at you. Let me get a good look at you. Let me get a good look at you. That's not my... Did I change my shortcut for going to first person? Oh, it doesn't matter. We can see it well enough. What is he doing? This is so creepy. I'm just going to zoom in on that face as well as I can from here because I've obviously changed my, my hotkey for first person. What the fuck? Ooh. Is he pulling the same face or is it a slightly different one? No, it's the same face. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Getting so distracted. Hey, what? Oh, foul teeth, man. Did your mother never tell you not to start to a farmer's hers? Look at that expectant face, Kokobayo. This gentleman is obviously a new applicant for the guild seeking audience with our eldest brother. Oh, prelate that's yeah, yeah, okay. So you can recite the 307 verses of the funerary rites to the virtuous void, but the simple task of keeping our name straight seems even beyond her grasp. <laughs> Well, I for one find the constant confusion endlessly entertaining. My apologies, good sir. My merriment was not meant to mock your mistake. It is our sibling Kogobuki with whom you should speak. What's this? What's this? Thal has led to us a new aspirant. Ah, Kogobuki! Were you here the entire time? Greetings, child. I am Kogobuki, the eldest and, I would venture to say, the wisest of the five masters of the Thaumaturgy Guild. It is my solemn duty to furnish our would-be initiates with a succinct understanding of our beloved art, thus I would have your fullest attention. To wield the Thaumaturgy is to unleash devastation of the highest magnitude. The lethal thought of our spells far exceeds the destructive capability of any other form of arcane manipulation. Well, that's your opinion, dude. Fire, lightning, blizzards, somnolence, the Thaumaturge calls upon an expansive arsenal of offensive incantations to incapacitate and obliterate all manner of adversaries. Open your mind to our sorceress teachings, and you too shall soon hold the unparalleled power of our discipline in the palm of your hand. <laughs> of course, such power has a price. You must be willing to plunge headfirst into the forbidding chasm of Thaumaturge's secrets, for advancement in this art comes only with the completion of deadly end. Terrible twelves. I ask you now, aspirant, are you prepared to leap into the abyss in pursuit of power unrivaled? It just it's so long as you'll stop talking and let me go kill some fucking rats or something, dude. <laughs> A confident response. Your name, if you will. Very well, Grunty, but let's mark your initiation with three eminently practical gifts. The first gift to you shall be in addition to your hunting log. The names of such enemies that will prove suitable to your training as a thaumaturge. The second and third gifts are the scepter and shield, instruments you shall need to focus the destructive force of your will. He's wearing the uh, the dark light claws there. Those are one of my absolute favorite gloves. Says, did you believe your initiation over? <laughs> my dear disciple, we have only just begun. Take your new weapons in hand, and I will set you forth upon your first trial. Oh man. All right, so guys, let me know if um, if my Lalafellian accent is really just absolutely giving you the shits. Then um, let's 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 dump this up here so we remember that. Then I will <laughs> I will do something about that. I'm willing to make a compromise. Um, but really, I feel like I'm already making a bit of a compromise because in my head, their voices are even more sort of high and piercing and, and horrible and disgusting and ugh, potatoes so many so many so many potatoes in this class quest all right what else can we put on 
strife gloves. That, what? Did I not put on the strife gloves? Strife gloves? Where are you look all? Is that part of the part of the chest piece? I don't know what's going on. What about wild rose? You know what? It really doesn't matter, does it? It really, really, it does not matter in the slightest what it is that I'm wearing. Let's put those dress shoes on. Those dress shoes look, look silly with those. Oh my god. I just, I'm sorry guys, glamour. Glamour is the true end game. You all know that. Alright, <laughs> that'll do. And let's, um, let's make a new gear set. The Thaumaturge, and we will put that right there. Alright. Excellent. What is that? Play guide? We definitely don't need that. Blizzard, uh, I'll work out my, um, God, why does it put these on my help bars? Alright, I'll work out, I'll work out those in a minute. Alright, Kokobuki, what's up? Kokobuki wishes to test the limits of your pharmaceutical aptitude. <laughs> the sector well compliments the avid desire for destructive power written upon your feet. Now we shall complete your initiation with a trial to test the limits of your aptitude for channeling Thaumaturgy. Huge honor, star marmots, and stepping shrews inhabit these lands in abundance. Exercise your sorceress might and slay three of each of these creatures before returning to my side. Alright. As I was saying, tell me if if the Lullifel voice is unbearable. But really, if if I could do a decent um a decent sort of high voice. What do you call it? I don't know what the term the term's on the tip of my tongue. It's a it's a singing term. It's something that I used to be able to do. Oh my god. Falsetto, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, um if if I could do a decent falsetto still, like I could when I was a young warthog, uh, believe it or not, I used to I used to sing quite a lot. Um well, enough anyway. Then uh, I would be doing it in falsetto and that would be that would be painful. Alright, so, yeah, keep that in mind, I suppose. But like I say, if it really is that, that gut-wrenching, then... You know what? No! If it's that gut-wrenching, blame it on the Lollifels, alright? Lollifels don't get to be attractive. Little potatoes, god damn it. Oh my god, so many... <laughs> this is like a, a, a bloody sea of targets out here. Alright, Blizzard, this is going to be pretty tedious. Now, what else is there to say about Thaumaturgy? So, it is interesting, uh, as we know, that uh, after the War of the Magi, uh, magic was, was sort of taboo and, and outlawed, and it was the, uh, the Belladion's, uh, I guess, discovery. At least, at least this is what is implied in, in the little that we know of this period, but it's implied that it's the Belladion sort of rediscovery of these ancient uh, Miyachi sort of secrets and things. All right, there we go, we got fire, excellent. That's, um, that rekindled, uh, and that's that's not meant to be a pun, uh, Eorzean interest in magic. And we had, of course, uh, Shototo uh, rediscovering some some ancient Miyachi stuff and ancient Alig stuff and, um, and developing a, a sort of less uh, technological and more uh, ethereal application of Meteor drew a, a star down to Earth and smashed it up into little bits and used uh, those bits to make the Stardust Rods. What else is there to say about Thaumaturgy? So we're drawing ether from... I don't know if we're liter... Oh my god. These, these dings. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we're literally drawing ether from the void. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the implication is that we're literally drawing ether from the void. Uh, that's the idea. But again, we're taking these sort of real raw, destructive base elements rather than taking sort of the natural ethereal components of the land around us, like conjurers do in channeling, uh, you know, wind or or earth or curative magics. It's sort of the stuff that's actually in, you know, trees and and plants and rocks around us. Uh, we're pulling on the more, uh, uh, the more sort of primordial forces of the void. Guys, it's been a long time since I played any, any Thaumaturge or Black Mage. I actually really enjoyed playing Black Mage. I played it a lot back in like 2.1, I think. I was really into Black Mage for a little while, um, but I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> so, 
So I gotta start. Um, that's that's a terrible reason to stop playing a class. You 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 keep you keep playing it until you get good at it. You know, it's uh, no class in this game is that difficult. That you're never gonna get your head around it. I'm just really fucking impatient. And Dragoon comes to me very naturally, so I stick with what I know. All right, well we got transposed there, and I'll take I'll take just a minute to to sort out my hot bars. I'll cross reference the the hot bars that I use on my main. And, uh, and sort that out as soon as we go and turn this quest in. Well, no offense to the, uh, the summoners and scholars out there and everyone that wanted me to play Arcanist. I really do think I'm going to have more fun with Black Magic. I hate pet classes. And it's not because it's difficult. Someone was saying in the comments for um, one of my Arcanist uh, stories that they find it frustrating that people think that pet classes are, are more difficult just because, you know, you got a pet and there's like this tiny little bit of micromanaging. No, I don't think they're particularly difficult, I just don't particularly like them. <laughs> Your satisfied look of a mage who is utterly vanquished his foes. Grundy, I formally welcome you into the Brotherhood of Thaumaturgers. The, the purpose of this trial is to gauge your capacity for wielding thaumaturgy, an innate quality, the limits of which are bound by the level of aesthetic energy flowing through your physical being. Now, this is something that we're going to see as we get into the post-50 Black Mage quests, is uh, if you don't have the soul of the Black Mage and you're not sort of channeling properly from the void, you end up using all the ether in your body and just burning the, just, just literally burning yourself to death. So that's one of the big risks involved here is it seems that Thaumaturgy is a lot more about using the ether native to your body and that's why we have a lot of these uh, forbidden spells because they're dangerous to the, to the wielder. Ether, the very stuff of life, exists within all living creatures to a greater or lesser extent. Remember this, for it is the most basic law of arcane manipulation. As your experience grows, so shall your reserves of thaumaturgical endurance. The wellspring of your magical might will also swell in response to moments of extreme terror and duress. When you find yourself seeking greater challenge, when next you crave the feel of exquisite fear, this is when you shall know the time has come for you to visit me once more. <laughs> Alright, now that is very interesting. So what Kokobuki is implying there is that we are using the ether of our body in channeling thaumaturgy at the moment this is not necessarily or exclusively the case with black mages but when we're in sort of uh heightened senses you think of uh i guess in more like naturalistic terms uh you know you get a fight or flight response you get a surge of adrenaline well what seems to be happening in in aeorsian logic is that you're getting a, uh, a swell of, of ether and you're drawing that in uh you know you're sort of i don't know how to say this it, it, it's a bit like the chakras for monk but your sort of ethereal pores kind of open up and you start absorbing more ether so it's when you're under duress when you're frightened or excited you're gonna have uh, a larger wellspring of ether to tap into as a thaumaturge now the point of disciplines like like conjury is that you're drawing ether from outside of you willingly and it's a, a sort of concerted uh, discipline. A discipline which seems that the thaumaturges here at this moment aren't actually all that interested in and they want to just sort of use the ether that's in our body incidentally and if more happens to be coming in because we're aroused then fantastic, great, wonderful. Anyway, I was going to do, I was going to do what we did with uh, with Arcanus and do the the level one and the level five in one chunk. But I ended up talking a lot more than I was expecting to for the start of this one. And jeez, um, I think we got like a lot of the Thaumaturge lore talk out of the way in the first episode. That is not to say that you shouldn't watch the next episode. It's going to be it's going to be a fantastic. Um, what is this? I've talked about this before, haven't I? So those of you who can't read Aeorzean, divinity is the color of gold, which is very, um, very apt for Nalthal worship, as we've been talking about. Anyway, God, I get so distracted uh, in in these these really, I don't know, the, the Arzeneth uh, Ossuary, it's one of those places that I just absolutely love. It's just absolutely dripping with a lot of goodies. Anyway, we'll do more of that next time. Uh, until then, uh, everyone, take care. Like, comment, subscribe, send it to your friends, share it with your friends, talk about it with, uh, to your dog. Um, 
Now, this, uh, these next couple of episodes are uh, probably not going to be released for like a couple of months because, as I mentioned, I'm just uh, I'm unlocking Summoner at the moment and I'm going to finish Summoner or at least get Summoner and Scholar to 50 and do those before I start on on Thaumaturge because I don't want to be there there to be like a big gap. I'd like, you know, the Thaumaturge episodes to be sequential. So I'm actually speaking to you from a couple of months in the past. So, um, I don't know. Any advice from the future? Just yell at your, your monitor now, lottery numbers or whatever. In terms of advice from the past, um, uh, don't forget to brush your teeth, all right? It's, it's important. You know, it's easy easy to forget when you're when you're working hard and you're coming home and you can't wait to, to log on and raid, but come on guys, remember to brush your teeth, all right? So until next time, remember to brush your teeth. Bye-bye.